In today's demo, we will see how Jackson, a data expert, uses eDiscovery Manager, and Page, a paralegal, uses eDiscovery Analyzer to complete the eDiscovery process. An email is received from one of the attorneys regarding a newly filed complaint over billing rates for a newly defined senior care program. Jackson begins with a dashboard of all current cases and selects to create a new case. He provides case name and description and also defines the extended team of data experts, paralegals, etc. that are able to access or work on this case. Searches are template driven and can be saved for reuse at a later point in time. They also can be scheduled or can occur on a recurring basis. Jackson reviews the results of his search and previews specific documents to verify relevance. As results appear to be relevant, he assigns the complete list of results to a case folder. By creating a case folder, case content is automatically preserved via solution hold in place capability. Jackson's next search, using the Exchange Server template, will focus on a set of custodians that he knows will have content related to this case. After his review of the custodian search, he creates a new folder in order to organize the result of his work. Jackson moves to case information where he is able to work at either the folder or the individual or group of files level. An audit trail of all activities is automatically created as part of processing. Having completed data collection and preservation, he completes natural language full text indexing to better prepare content for detailed analysis. With indexing complete and content available, we switch to Page, the paralegal, who is presented with a dashboard of cases ready for detailed analysis and early case assessment. Opening the case, she is presented with details of the case. She notes that there are 950 items awaiting her review. She also notes the many search capabilities and options for refining her analysis. She begins her search for content containing all keywords. In addition to the selected keyword, she is also presented with a list of additional suggested terms and common phrases relating to the keywords identified. A small subset of content has been identified. Page, having reviewed the initial document, selects to have all duplicates handled in parallel. This is very valuable for early case assessment and initial flagging of results. She selects one of the custom definable flags and flags the document as responsive so it will be included in eDiscovery material. As these are key documents, she could also add comments to this set of documents. She uses filter by flags to exclude responsive content from future searches and analysis. Continuing, she refines her analysis by using concept groups to identify confidential, privileged, and legal content. She selects multiple flags for this set of proprietary content, so it will be excluded from eDiscovery material. Completing additional analysis and having completed review, Page saves her analysis and returns the result to Jackson. With early case assessment complete, Jackson reopens the case to complete export and disposition of the folders and the associated case. He sees that Page has created a number of folders that will need to be acted upon. He begins by selecting the responsive folder. As the responsive folder contains content required as part of the eDiscovery response, he exports this content for production. This content will continue to be held in place until case resolution. Jackson validates that the export has been successful. Full audit capabilities are provided in support of the eDiscovery process. Upon completion, Jackson selectively removes held content from the case by deleting it from the folder. As content is deleted from the case, the hold in place is released. Content required by multiple cases continues to be held in place until all cases have been resolved. Upon final resolution, Jackson is able to deactivate the entire case. Today we have seen how eDiscovery Manager and eDiscovery Analyzer can be used to optimize the eDiscovery process. For more information, please contact IBM. Thank you.